Hello and welcome to game 3 um, of the Battle of Barad-dûr, which was now escalated to 650 points where I added in Snaga, a captain and uh, a drummer, um, plus another warband of scouts and it was against David Farmer's Isengard. It was Command the Battlefield, another new scenario so I was very excited to try it out because I enjoyed the last one. Um, it's essentially what whole ground should have been, uh, except instead of fighting over the exact middle, you fight over all four corners and it is Maelstrom. Um, I rolled very separate for all my warbands so I went with it uh, to try and maximise my chances of getting as many corners but uh, I was told afterwards that perhaps a key tactic is go for two, try and get for third but don't spread yourself out for four and that's the mistake I made. I've played David a few times before and he's a very good player and he capitalised on my uh, mistake. Um, he hadn't played the scenario either so he was kind of going with it as well and see what he could manage but he brought all of his army pretty much behind my one warband of Ugluck which was my leader um, whilst the other two, one of my warbands didn't come in but the other two were at the opposite end of the board fighting for those corners so he was hoping to take out that warband quick. My warband did survive a bit longer than perhaps either of us were anticipating and help did arrive. His main heroes were Ugluck, uh, uh, Golroth the Ironskin, the new Dunland hero, and Saruman. And Saruman was just blasting and immobilising Ugluck, and Ironskin was just going after Ugluck, um, trying to take him down, but Ugluck just would not die. He was refusing. Um, he's an absolute hero and just holding on whilst my second warband came on and gave him a bit of help. Um, the momentum stopped with David there, and I was starting to bring the rest of my army into aid that, and it was starting to look like it was going to go my way. Meanwhile, at the opposite end of the table, Malhar and Snargar's warband made their way up towards uh, Ugluck's half of the board to try and help with those two corners at this end. Still, somehow, my small portion of my army down in this bottom left-hand corner survived and was just surviving overwhelming numbers, um, but it was only a matter of time before he was able to um, kill Ugluck and take out that warband, but I was hoping um, that... Uh, uh, because it's 25% uh, I believe, I was hoping that I'd be in the correct places when that happened, they'd hold on just long enough and that was what I was hoping for was to die off the objectives, classic old tactic there. So here's a larger overview of the battlefield uh, in the centre there, that's my captain is walking making the, his way over, um, there was a few in the middle from David's side trying to make their way to the opposing objectives but the captain just took out like four or five uh, in a couple of rounds of combat, it was awesome. Still making their way up were now Maha and Snaga, um, hopefully they'd be there in time. My captain's warband was able to make it over and sort of try and pin most of David's army in the corner. Grishnak was hanging on despite Ugluck finally, finally going down, we all know it's going to happen, but it took five, six turns longer than we both thought it might. Um, Grishnak there fighting with only two or three orcs just hanging on. David needed to make sure he took them out to get more points with more models in the corner, but my captain coming in at the top right um, was able to hopefully just stall them a little bit longer while Malher and Snaga claimed the other corners. I just didn't have the numbers in the end to be able to um, withhold David's army um, much longer, so quite a few did manage to break out. Um, my scouts were, were very, very lucky and were able to help the captain in his combats and kill uh, two or three orcs within there um, of David's. Um, my shooting was much better than his, his shooting didn't do anything to me, so he gradually brought his orc scouts, you can see in the bottom right, round behind the ruins just to protect that corner because he's starting to get a little worried. My captain was working wonders in the centre, just killing through any ox that came towards him. Eventually Saruman had enough and was just immobilising and commanding the captain away every time whilst David just tidied up that bottom left hand corner and was able to swoop a large portion of his army, probably two thirds of his left, um, toward what remained of mine, which wasn't enough to hang on. So essentially, like I say, I was hoping to be in the right place at the right time for when the inevitable came and he broke me and 25 percent of me. David now was just hoping to look to solidify this bottom right hand corner so he had this whole bottom half of the board to himself. I was able to sneak a few more scouts into this bottom right hand corner meaning I had more than him but it was only worth one point. He claimed the bottom left giving him two. I, uh, he claimed the top left but I had one in there so he claimed one point for that and the far right one Oryx scout managed to pass his courage test meaning I had two points for that. But with me being broken 25 percented and my leader dying, he was able to win it 8-3 in total in the end. Um, a very touch and go game there, but I think uh, David played it better than me with the better army as well. 
So we have it, Game 3, Command the Battlefield, very, very enjoyable, um, preferred it to the Retrieval one actually, um, the, it was proper old school skirmish where there's just models all over the board fighting all sorts of places, lots of one-on-ones, key areas to fight over, um, but ultimately I did lose 8-3 in the end, um, David a very, very good player, that's 3-1 to him now against me, so next time I'll have to, I'll have to beat him, but um, so yeah, that is a 3-0 loss and 6-0 win and an 8-3 defeat going to Game 4, which was Contest of Champions.